Patrick. I'm Jenny. Nice to meet you. Yeah, the pleasure is mine. Um, I'm here to do a review on um, Kubernetes. Okay, cool. Yeah. Let's um, first talk about some of the differences between ionic and covalent bonding. So ionic is between a metal and a non-metal, and they um, take electrons from each other. Whereas with covalent, it's a metal or a non-metal and a no another non-metal, and they share electrons. Yeah, I, I know that. Okay, cool. So ionic would be, for instance, like sodium and chlorine, whereas um, something like hydrogen and chlorine would be covalent. Also, electronegativity is really important. Um, it, the periodic trend on the table will tell you, like fluorine, for instance, is more electronegative, um, whereas something like cesium is not. Yeah, I, I don't know what that. Uh, you know what? Uh, I have to go to class. I'm, okay. I'm running late. Okay. Thank, thank you so much for that. Yeah, it was nice meeting you. Thank you. Hi, are you Joshua? Yeah, what's up? Um, can I have a seat? I need help with calculus. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, yeah, I was hoping you could help me out with limits. Yeah. Oh, uh, what do you have? Like, what's a specific problem? Um, can we go over, like, number nine, maybe? Oh, uh, yeah. So what are the major steps of determining the limit that we have just gone over? Uh, so I think you need substitution at first, but if that doesn't work, then you use something five. Sweet. That's it, right? Oh, okay. um, yeah, sure, I guess. All right, well, I guess I'll see you later. Thanks. Well, I have Gen Chem on my list, and I think I should be fine because I'm in P Chem and Biochem right now, so we use that kind of stuff all the time. Yeah, I just got done with a general chemistry session with some student who's asking about um, limiting reactant problems. Um, do you remember anything about that? Yeah, I think I remember that kind of thing. It's like, it's just basic algebra and stoic, so. So I'm having trouble with like this specific limiting reactant problem. Okay, um, let me take a look at it. Uh, it's been a while since I took Gen Chem, so I may have to review a little bit. Yeah, so what you get when you um, calculate the moles is that CO2 is the limiting reactant. Um, but I'm not really sure what's happening with this. Okay, because it shows that the answer is supposed to be hexane, but I mean, the method you're showing me gets me CO2. And also, like in class, um, my teacher showed us a different method, so I don't know. Okay, well, this technique that I showed you should work. Um, it's probably just a calculator error giving us this answer, so. Sorry, I'm late. Uh, it's, it's fine. Uh, I actually have class in like a few minutes, so I just wanted to just run through a quick problem. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what are you showing them? Okay, um, I just don't really understand number 19. Uh, I tried to work it out, but I just didn't. Okay, understand. so I'll watch you do a problem, and I'll just tell you a Okay. Um, Okay. 
He's in political science, right? Joshua, you yeah. tutor political science, right? Yeah, it's my major. Is someone here for it? Yeah, um, it's not showing up on the SSC. What's SSC? Finally finished studying for accounting. Do you uh, have any tips for a business law? I'm on the same boat with you. I have no idea how to stay for this. Well, um, that's okay. Wait, are you in the same business law class? Uh, I have no idea. But, I mean, I, I would start studying at midnight anyway, so. Well, all right. I guess I need another cup of coffee. So, is it okay if I just sit here and do some like, kind of problems and then ask you kind of questions? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Jenny. 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 What? How did that exam go for you? I know, so. Yeah, I thought it was pretty difficult, too. for my financial accounting class, like a specific question from the book. Do you think you can help me with that? Yeah, no problem. All right, cool. Uh, let's see. Okay, it's question 45. All right, let me have a look. <clears throat> okay, so current assets are usually assets that you expect to be turned into cash within a year, and you usually find them on balance sheets. Um, so I guess... My my question to you is would be like what do you like your account accounts receivable current assets or are they are they found on the balance sheet? Uh yes. Alright, what about cash? I think that's also on the balance sheet. And inventory? I'm pretty sure that's an asset on the balance sheet. Got it. And then sales revenue? Uh I can't remember what it's called, but I know it's not on the balance sheet. So I'm guessing that'd be your answer then. Because the rest of them, you, like, you find them on balance sheets. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, let me write this down. Sweet. And what, what do you expect to find, like, questions like these? Uh, well, usually our quizzes come straight from these questions in the textbook. And my guess is that that one will definitely be on there. So, I hope to see it tomorrow. Oh. Maybe I should have asked this before. Are there any topics specifically that you want to go over? Yeah, um, mitosis and meiosis. Okay, um, so let's talk about some of the differences between the two. So in mitosis, there are um, two haploid or two diploid daughter cells that result um, from one division, whereas meiosis results in four haploid daughter cells, and there are two divisions that happen. And so um, another major thing is that the daughter cells in mitosis are identical, whereas they're not in meiosis. And that is because of processes like independent assortment and crossing over. So does all of that sound kind of familiar? Hey, I'm here for Oakham One Tutor. Okay, awesome. That's one of my favorite classes. Is there anything specific that you want to go over? Um, yeah, we've been talking about uh, IR and NMR, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. Um, so I actually took a class in that subject. Um, so that was a really interesting class. So is there something specific about that? Uh, yeah, I 
think that we've been talking about peaks in class and I really don't understand. Okay, so I think the first thing to know is that there's different types of NMR. So there's proton, carbon, 2D, multinuclear, and there's a bunch like that. But as far as OCHEM 1 goes, I think you just look at proton. But it's interesting to know that there's all kinds of ways to read spectra. So for peaks, I think, let's take a look at this. So this is a special program that I've shown in my class. And it's nice because it allow, allows you to read spectra digitally. So you can actually adjust the signal noise ratio when you have bad shims. Um, okay, that's cool. So I think for looking at a peak, what would be important to focus on first would be the chemical shift. So for example, a more electronegative species like oxygen would be more down the field. And I don't think this is covered as much in OCHEM 1, but um, something that's also important with chemical shifts is long-range coupling. And so that's when something that's three or four bonds away from a hydrogen can still affect its chemical shift. So something that's not necessarily right next to it can affect where it falls on the spectra. So an example of that would be like a W coupling, which is when you have a ring system and there's <coughs> something that affects a hydrogen a few bonds away when they're beta to each other. Well, man, that helped a lot. Uh, I don't think I've ever understood force diagrams better. You're a pretty good physics student. Thanks. So is there anything else you need help with? Uh, yeah, there was one other thing in that class. Uh, I think angular momentum. Do you know anything about that? Uh, well, let me take a look. Uh, do you have your book in class notes with you? Um, I have some notes from class. All right. So what do you know about angular momentum? Um, honestly, not that much. Okay, so angular momentum deals with the quantity of rotation of a body, which is a product of the momentum of its inertia and angular velocity. Does that sound familiar? I mean, it sounds like what I have written in my notes, but I was wondering if you could like help me break that down. Um, well, maybe you should just go see your professor. Okay. 